The advice given in this presentation constitutes opinions gleaned from over 20 years, but they are just opinions. They may not work for your organisation or group. Funders change their information and priorities at their own discretion. There is no guarantee that any funder will be willing or able to fund your organisation or group, or that these approaches will be successful. Before you start fundraising from trusts and foundations, it's always useful to have a look at what you've already got within your group or organisation. I call this what's in the fridge. Before you go shopping, it's always a good idea to open the fridge and see what's already in there. Then you know what you need. Do you have a strategy and a vision or a plan for your group or organisation? Do you have a healthy organisation with demonstrable impact? Do you have regular or previous trust or grant givers? A good profile in the community? Individuals who give to your group, either with items or with money or with their time. Do you already have fundraising staff or do you have volunteers in this area? Do you have a committed, skilled and humble board of trustees? A strategic fundraising plan? And finally, what are you trying to raise funds for? If you know this already, then you are part way there. We're going to be looking in this presentation at what funders actually want. By funders in this presentation, we're referring to grant making trusts and foundations. The first thing I would argue that they want to know or they want to see is the need. Can you evidence that what you're asking for is in fact needed? Have you talked to people locally? How did you first become aware that this was in fact a need? Can you point to any statistics or any national information or any regional information that backs up your claim? They want to know about impact. What positive difference or differences have you made to the need you outlined? Or, if it's a new project, what difference could or will you make? Communication. Do you phone your funders? Do you know what it is that they want to know? Quite often, I think, we're tempted to tell them everything without actually finding out how they make their decisions and what they actually would like to find out about you. Do you invite current and former funders to come and meet with you? Do you show them the project and the thing that they have funded? Former funders, even if the grant has ended, quite often would like to see the impact of their investment. And it could be a really good opportunity to have an informal conversation about applying again. Do you send your funders random good news stories, bits of information, case studies? as well as all the regular news and reporting that you're required to do. Do you speak their language? If you've looked at the web, if your funder has a website and you've looked at the website, they probably mention priorities, things they like to fund. They probably use certain language. It's a good idea in communicating with them to reflect that language back to them. Treat them like a friend. Don't treat them like a cash machine. Most funders, many funders, want to have a longer term relationship. They want to feel like partners and they want to feel like they are part of the solution. Funders want to make decisions based on their head and their heart. When you think about a grant making trust, consider that there is a board sat around a table or on Zoom or via email who is making the decision, these are human beings, there will be a variety of individuals and they will be motivated differently. Some people are head decision makers. They want to see the facts and they want to see the stats. Others are heart decision makers. They get moved by stories. It's a good idea to, in all your um, applications to trusts and foundations, to make sure you're covering both the head and the heart thinkers. 
Remember that people have different decision-making motors. And some funders are looking for a reason to put you on the no pile. This sounds really negative, but comes from experience, particularly concerning funds that are very, very oversubscribed. When the grant officers or the trustees have a massive pile of applications in front of them, they will be looking for a way to get that pile down into reasonable, manageable um, collection that they can consider. And so anything like um, you've forgotten to include a certain document that they've asked for, you have gone over a word count, perhaps you've sent photographs when they explicitly asked you not to, anything like that, if you have looked through their um, guidelines for applying, make sure that you heed every single one of them because it's not that they're being unkind, quite often they're just so oversubscribed, they need a reason to put your very good project on the no pile just so that they can manage the number of applications they do have. Evaluation. Funders want to know that you care whether your project has worked or not. If you ever intend to approach a funder more than once, you need to be prepared to evaluate the work that you've done. Funders would often rather fund you again. If you have done a project and done a project well and reported well and kept them in touch with what was going on, you have become a safe pair of hands for them. So they would have every reason to wish to fund you again. So you need to show when you've got it right. This is the ripple effect. If you evaluate your project, you will be able to improve your future bids because you will see where perhaps your anticipated outcomes weren't realistic or perhaps the timing was off. And this will therefore improve your chances in the future. Surely you want to be able to prove your own successes to existing funders, previous funders, and of course to potential future funders, to your board, to the public, to your end users, to yourselves. You want to know your own outcomes, right? You want to know whether you got it right. And sometimes we don't get it right. And when it goes wrong, a funder wants to see that too. They want to see that a problem happened, how you dealt with it, how you communicated with them, and what you did to go about resolving that. So what do funders want? They want to understand the niche impact of your project that you're presenting to them. Need, impact, communication, head and heart, and evaluation. 